for the uh, the fun one I've seen in the Java world, there's a Java library called iText. It's used for PDF creation and manipulation. So if you decide to create PDFs in your application and you use an iText, you have to give your whole application source code up. So. Well, I wonder if the company I worked for had had issues with this. Good chance. There, there are other Java PDF libraries, but the iText one yeah, has a very uh, good SEO ranking. And if you don't like the Afro GPL, there's a very nice commercial license you can buy instead. That seems so. very decent, actually, as long as they have that option. I would actually be fine if they didn't have either option being a purist. No, I wouldn't but if you made their thing and acted as a second client and use your client just to go talk to them. Talk to a lawyer. <laughs> it depends on the linking and the understanding of the legal system's understanding of how object code works. Yes, and depending on how much money your lawyers have. Um, oh, the only other thing I'd like to note, <coughs> thank goodness they're actually connecting over IPv6, so my hat's off to the legal office folks. Oh, it resolves to both. I'm okay with that. On the other hand, you're probably really, uh, well, I guess Hurricane Electric has a lot of bandwidth, don't they? Oh, yeah. They're like a major backbone, aren't they? Okay. <laughs> Any question? Any other questions? <coughs> I'll detach the screen and let it build for a while. Um, Get a call from, from home. Uh, Chris, these, your server is like melting. <laughs> well, this is actually, this is my low power server, so okay. I have no idea how long this build's gonna take. There's a good chance it's gonna take days. Um, Post to the list when it finishes. <laughs> Should've run that command with the time. You so redid with all your bootstraps. <laughs> oh, I'm restarting it. When you kill the shell, you're gonna kill the build, is that right? No, I, I put it in the screen session. Oh. He's going to detach and it'll keep running. There you go. Oh, Woohoo! I remember how to do it. Control AD? Yeah. So you can reattach back into the processes? Yep. I know, like 8, 16, 32. That is how many CPUs this box has. So, for the record, at proc CPU pro. This is a be fine. Athlon uh, B2400, which is the equivalent of a Celeron, but has virtualization support. And sort of, but it only has that much cash on it. Is that the shared cash or cut in half? There's no shared cash. So each, each core has its own 512 KB. All right, that's not horrible. That's not horrible, I'll just... I will post a list when this completes. I'll put it that way. Several so, days from now. But you'll see, Dylan was what I was talking about, about them using a weird form of, uh, uh, what's it called, gmake. So they're using, they're probably turning that in file into a .gbuild file and then... Executing it, yeah. Weird. It works pretty well, I have to admit. So I guess they're using, I guess if you wanted to define it in simple terms, like man, if you're trying to talk to your some, your technically competent boss but who didn't want to know the details, you would say that it's using autoconf and the custom set of make files. That's a reasonable way to put that. Okay. I'm sure at some point they'll probably move to CMake, but they're doing, like, one of their accomplishments is they're trying to, sh well, there's a couple things they're working on. The biggest one is to shrink the size of the code that they're supplying. Like at one point, they had a the entire copy of the Firefox Mo or the Mozilla suite as one of their uh, delivered source entities because they needed the LDAP library that they had from Mozilla to download like address book entries. It was one of the bugs to get that out. Yes. Remove the source code, please. Yes. Um, there's many cleanups that they've done with that, which is why when somebody asks, where is the Apache Open Office versus LibreOffice? The thing that shows me the most is when you look at the commit log, <coughs> the rate of change 
is dramatically higher on the LibreOffice side compared to the Apache OpenOffice side. And they can do branching and actually do experimental things without having to for without having to worry about merging later. Uh, I, I got another project that I use the uh, called uh, for build at work called uh, Jenkins had the same treatment with the Oracle and Sun. There was a fork because Oracle did bad things. The remaining code get donated this time to the Eclipse Foundation, which is basically IBM. Yeah, pretty much. And you watch the rate of change go, and the fork is surviving. So which is Jenkins. Yes. Great build tool, like Jenkins. Um, it was concerned for a while. I'd heard that thought that uh, MySQL was going to take that meta die. But I guess it's further on. I think it I think it had better support from Oracle. It is still kind of taking a nose dive. A lot of distributions are switching to Maria SQL. Yeah, I saw that announcement. Okay. Well, Most of the MySQL Go Postgres. <laughs> jumps of Maria. I haven't even heard of Maria. It's actually oh, being cute. installed by default in most distributions now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. library yeah. compatible with MySQL, but has some experimental features. <coughs> Is everyone familiar with Scream? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I'm Is actually not familiar yeah. with Scream. How do you spell it? Uh, Scream, S C R E U N. Uh, Scream and Tmux are terminal multiplexers. They let you create multiple, create and run multiple shells at the same time, and you can switch between them. It's like um, tab browsing. If you're, uh, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like tab browsing, or if you're running from a console and you do Control F1 to go to your first terminal, and Control F2 to go to your second terminal, and Control F2 to go to your third terminal. It's it's very similar to that. You um, could also say in a way it's somewhat similar to a remote desktop that you can detach from. Well, that's, that's the nicest mm. thing is that you can detach from it, and all your stuff keeps on running as if you'd still been there. Mm. That yeah. script so saves you from issues. Um, so what are we detaching? I use it because I can be on anywhere at once. Actually, I was compiling a list of things that like that, that are, are given as givens in this talk because it's much easier doing this from the audience. Because I, I know up, up there, in the, you talk about things that's hard to see. You know what we need to talk about at future meetings. So I've actually have a little list in my head of things that we could introduce. Um, like uh, several of us up here were bantering around about Git, but you know no one knows about that. And I just made an offhand comment about branching being harder for open office because the reason is a version and I didn't even say that, it was just implied. So there's there's a whole range of things that we can go over. Yeah, that's what I would agree with interested interested in. In. Yeah. Might even take a poll by the end of the meeting on, on that. It's good that you use the politically correct branching instead of forking, which apparently people are getting pissed off about nowadays. Did really? anyone actually have a, I, has anyone actually been pissed off by that? I thought that was a, a spoof of the other things that, that No, that woman was actually pissed off and those two guys took a picture of lost their job. Oh, she did too, though. I read yeah. about that. Andrea Richards. What they lose their job for? They were they were the old coding event. Was that? Uh, Python, I think. Yeah, it was it Python. Was, yeah, it was the Python coding event, and they, the guy was up there making his presentation, and the guys behind her started making all these stupid jokes about forking and all that other fun stuff. No, they were actually talking about forking the code. She took it the wrong way, and then they made oh, jokes about the dongle, and then she got pissed off, off and. And, so, and they were being quiet to each other. She got pissed off and took a picture and blogged about it and got a whole uproar. They got kicked out and lost their jobs. But And also so that the original person, so pretty much everyone involved has lost their, has lost their yeah. employment. The nuclear option. It just goes to show you, next time you're going to talk about forking in front of other people, just record the session so you have evidence. Uh, as being someone that's actually been involved with slightly smaller conferences, a friend of mine uh, organized the 2011 I think it was 2011, Perl conference. The general procedure for anyone that had, for so if you have any kind of problem, especially related to sexism, uh, the, there's two things that you do. You have to talk to both parties, and regardless of who started it, you usually make both of them leave. You apologize to whichever one was more wronged, but in general, as to limit your own liability, you, you make them gone. Uh, the PyCon organizers didn't really take a very proactive response, which is why the person 
twittered it. And I mean, they twittered it during the thing, but there wasn't a lot of, there were other things leading up to that, and it was sort of badly managed. It's, yeah. it's actually very important to, to, be, to be more open about that and to actually have a policy about discrimination for technical events. There was that one before that at Seaside San Francisco. The woman was just talking about drugs and how they affect brains. And they included the date rape drug <laughs> as what it does so sociologically. And the woman actually does crisis counseling. But her, her conference or her talk got uh, banned because one woman basically was a hit for her. And she's like, well, I, I was uh, raped, so you can't talk about it. And got broken out. Turns out she wasn't raped. It's just that's her stand. Uh, they have their own organization behind that. And months before they even had the, you know, the presentation listed, she's like, "Well, we have to do something about this event." Yeah. So this woman screamed that she was raped just so they could keep the idea of all these drugs and all their effects on people out of public. Aid. Well, just so she can make a sense about it, because she runs a public organization to keep women in open technology. But they basically finding a, a, an issue to be pissed off about, not actually having one. I mean, there are actual, and not to be, there's the, to be the complete other side of this, there are actual problems in the tech community that do need to be addressed, and, and there are be. Like at the Ruby conference two years ago now, when someone's slides basically included pornographic images, that's, that's certainly not something, that's certainly bad on the presenter's part. And I don't, and the, the problem with that is no one at the Ruby conference saw that as a problem, at least on the majority of them. So. Yeah, I, uh, you kind of have to have balance both sides of the coin and, and try to be sensible and equitable. Well, we're speaking about conferences. Anyone going to B Sides Orlando this weekend? I didn't even know about it. I mentioned it at your, comp at your meeting last month. I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? B Sides Orlando. It's a uh, Relatively cheap. It's only twenty-five dollar security conference. Saturday, Sunday in Orlando. Um, the twenty they, and they they did have free tickets, but the uh, they ran out of those. So twenty-five dollar gets you like electronic badge with LED and a bunch of other stuff on it. They haven't exactly said what, but I just so. show up again. Uh, which depends. Uh, I think there's only about like twenty spots open. But I'm going. I've been wanting to go for a while, so. I may look into that. Um, I'll let you know. I mean, it's, they don't have the full speaker list out yet, but they have <coughs> from uh, the first couple of call for papers. Just do put together a search engine and go from that to the. Oh, all the devices that are. Shana, Shana, Shana. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Shanda. What are you talking about? No, I'm going to slash that. It should be recently enough. Yeah, it was a, it was earlier today. There's a slash article about these people made a search engine. Said, so did. Oh, oh, yes. oh, oh! I'm interested in. So they've been out for a while. Excuse me. Uh, uh, you see, I was trying to see if I can maybe get the code for that and just let it bolt through in Verizon's internal <laughs> and see what I got. Well, like there's that one guy who did. Show that. Yeah, show that. Do you okay. guys? It's it's a great website. Well, it's not the website. I want the code. Uh, I don't care about his database. Did you hear? Oh, did you hear about that other guy who hacked embedded devices, basically just to do full port scans of the entire network, like the entire address spacing? Hmm. And he basically, because it was all illegal, he uh, released it in code. He didn't compress oh. it with a couple hundred gigs. So, what was that? Can you go back to the um, to, to slash shop? Because I saw something yeah, fantastic uh, that I might actually want to. Um, it's interesting because I was talking about last night. Optimus. Mm. Nvidia? What? Yeah. So you're telling me I actually get support for my, my, my hardware now? Almost. Now they have to set it up. Now that you've got it figured out yourself. That's awesome. So actually, I was off, but I, I, just in case anyone's on the slug list, we had a discussion the other day that a couple of members thought it was a flame war, and I don't really think it is because I've seen actual flame wars on other places that are much more violent. Uh, Joe Brandt is our meeting coordinator in training or in in creation in Sarasota, and he was he was a little worried about the tone of the of the thread. But um, so I mentioned that it's really good that we have the open source driver, and it's getting better. That's the new Val driver. Nouveau, yeah, Art Nouveau, Nouveau. The Nouveau driver is the open source NVIDIA driver, and it's getting a lot of work done. It's going to support 
Optimus graphics as soon as the kernel API stabilized, which it is, which is called DMA buff. And I said, this is good because it's pushing NVIDIA to improve their driver. I'm sure even if there's not, even if they're not making much money from this, which it isn't the case now, by the way, because Steam really wants NVIDIA to work really well on Linux. So they want to stay relevant. So otherwise, Steam will just go with the open source driver for their Steam box, obviously. But they still have to lead. So to keep that, they have to keep doing new features. And there's some evidence of the fact that their development pace has increased because the open source driver is getting so good. So this is good. Uh, I don't necessarily... The open source driver has 4.3 support now. Yeah, right? it does. It, it works really good. There's glitches and it's a little slower, but I mean, I use it. I can use it. I still would use the closed... I still use the closed source driver for games because it's, it's, it's still more supported, but I have no ties to either one. I'll, I'll probably use which one's better. That's not entirely true. Full disclosure, I am an open source purist at heart, I just am pragmatic enough that I don't always need to do that. I mean, if I was too pragmatic, if I was a completely pragmatic person, I would be using Windows or Mac, but I actually have morals and ethics towards open source to kind of guide me to want to use more open things, and I think that's important. Which is the point I tried to get across the mailing list last night at midnight, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to take that opportunity to explain that. <laughs> we forgive you. Cool. For by the way, did anyone say uh, reply to your Git clone thing? No. I guess that probably happens somewhat frequently. The, uh, They'll probably let you off. Cool. All right. Thank, Thank you, Chachi. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the slug job list? Mm, yeah. It's not much to prove. Well, point about that. I think that the, the whatever thing was Floyd made a good point. You know, it's not exactly an important thing. I don't see why having it around is that bad of a deal, but. I mean, I, I do like Paul. Might as well create an RSS Paul's, feed. Paul's post about it seemed to make a lot of sense. It's on the website. It's there. Yeah, and, and I don't. Well, I was told the website didn't work until I tried using it. It does, so I don't know. Well, I subscribed to it, but there haven't been any messages. I sent two or three, I posted two or three jobs to it this morning. Did you? Maybe it's going to be my spam filter. There's a good chance. <laughs> yeah, right. We, well, seeing as I'm not qualified for any of them. Do you have any keys and email? Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do, I've been trying to do like, really? Okay, yeah. I have seen your performance engineer but I know, I know the gist of it. I was going to have to do it because he had three times more than he had. All right, I think uh, a couple of things we can go over and then we can have an introduction. Bill, can I have a floor? I guess. What? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to bring it up. I did. So, box moment here. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, the uh, things I've noticed on the mailing list. For one thing, how many people here aren't on the mailing list or don't even know we have one? Okay, we'll fix that. Are you on the meetup group? Because, okay, if you're on the meetup group, I'm going to post a thing in the forum giving you really precise instructions for joining the mailing list. It's useful to be on there. Uh, is anyone here named BA? No. I wonder if that was Brian Allred. Could have been Brian. No, I don't think it was. His writing style was different. So uh, a former member of the A team wrote on the mailing list the other day saying the mailing lists were antiquated and, and stuff. In, in reference to the job list, which is topic number three, which I'll get to in a second, as you can see. <laughs> um, because I don't have slides. So this is just a, so a few things I want to get out. Um, things you need to know about slug. Um, we have presence. We have presence at this point pretty much everywhere. Suggestions we frequently get on the mailing list by people that aren't aware of the other presences, like Meetup. Uh, and we have other things on people on, uh, we haven't had anyone on Facebook that isn't aware of the other stuff, but technically we could have a situation where people don't know about all the places we are. So they make suggestions. They're great suggestions, but they're things that we've already done. So I'm going to go over a little bit of a list of there. You don't have to remember all of it. We should have a website. We do. We, we list this thing. <laughs> we don't list all the things because I'm working on that, and I, I've been also working 20 hours. We should let everyone know we have a website by saying everyone an email. I could do that. In fact, I have done. Anyway, so let's go over the things that we have so you know the places you can find us online. So, email type of thing. we have a mailing list. That's the primary, basically the way Slug works, you're considered a member if you're on the mailing list. Um, you can still come to meetings, obviously, if you're not, but the way that our organization is currently structured, the mailing list is like the primary thing that we provide other than meetings. 
Although, honestly, if you come to all the meetings and you're never on the mailing list, I still like you because you come to the meetings, whereas there's a whole bunch of people on the mailing list that never come to meetings. So, in order, mailing list, IRC, a website that's in need of update, a meetup group, a Facebook group, a Google Plus community, as of today, a LinkedIn group, and a Twitter feed. If you can think of anywhere else where you would like Slug to exist online and you're willing to maintain that presence, Oh. Go right in <laughs> We can have a Pinterest if you want. For each of the places Slug has a presence, we should tell about all the places Slug has a presence. Yes, uh, and what we, the meetup does. The website and have the website point out everywhere else. And that's the website will be confusing. Yeah. The meetup, the meetup lists all of our other presence quite conveniently right now, which is why I haven't worried too much about the website. The channel too. We have an IRC channel. We need to ma document that on the web and document the variances that are the different operating system things that connect to. I was thinking about adding that, and then I forgot you were going to update the whole website. So I was like, ah, I won't try and commit anything. Which is why I haven't done it. The other reason I stopped updating the website, too, is I started, I started getting, around the same time I designed it, I started getting larger and larger displays, and the current layout doesn't stretch. So, But nevertheless, I suspect the, uh, is like, I'm either going to, unless I'm going completely insane at work, or our other client drops off the face of the earth and I have to seek different employment. So four months. No, I should actually, in the next month, or in, within the next month, within the month of April, I should actually have enough of my, uh, my supposed, I supposedly get 20% time to work on open source stuff, which I think the Slug website counts as that. So I should be getting at least a Friday <coughs> out of every week to work on the Slug site, we can hope. Um, so that's what Soapbox, Soapbox number one is we have connections. If you don't know that Slug is a particular place, feel free to ask. But by default, you should default assumption, what, Brian? I was going to say, if we do have a write-up of uh, all the places that Slug has a presence, it should also include a note of why you want to use this. Why as far as I can tell, I don't, I'm not going to do that. I don't think you should use it. I don't think you should use any of them. You should come to meetings. The <laughs> other resources are a thing to bring you to come to meetings. Because I'll tell you, there is no re online resource for asking questions that Slug can provide better than you than the rest of the internet. People, and this is my soapbox number two, which is a nice segue. Uh, Slug is a good resource for asking questions, I guess. It's never been the best resource for me. The way, I, like, if, you, if I walk in here and I tell you guys about, about Screen or Git, those are things that I've learned on other corners of the internet. I've learned them from Russians and from Chinese people and from people from New Zealand and a bunch of Australians and a crazy guy named BD who works for Amazon now who lives in Maine. These are the people that have taught me things. And you go to Stack Overflow, you get on on uh, on you arguments. Know. You get on arguments with people on Slashdot about yeah, stupid that things. That'll educate you just as much. My point being, Slug cannot offer you that this. kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying they can't. Slug does offer you, but it's never your best resource. The best resource that you have, and this is why I say I'm up on a soapbox now is these meetings. That's why you should be a member of Slug, is 